Today we're going to work with some glacial acetic acid. It says here this is 99.7%. And the freezing point of glacial acetic acid is just over 60 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, just over 19 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pour some of this into these two beakers. And we're going to go ahead and place these in the fridge and freezer. and see if we can get this to freeze. And then we're going to look at what happens when it melts and what happens when we take frozen uh, glacial acetic acid and mix it with some baking soda solution. So we're going to go ahead and spin these over to the fridge. So we now have taken this out of the freezer and it's already started to melt. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Before that we had some very cool patterns where some of the vapors potentially had frozen up high. Uh, and so I'm going to bring out a second one in a second we can look at that. But before we do, we're going to mix some solid this is sodium carbonate, I can't find any baking soda, but a more basic form of baking soda. And when we mix this with the acetic acid, it should produce water, which means that it should react relatively quickly. And that should cause the acetic acid to melt as that water produces because only the very pure acetic acid is what freezes at such a low temperature. So we're going to go ahead and see what happens here. That's interesting, there's very little bubbling going on. You could hear some initial reaction when they first mixed, but not much happening since. I'm gonna set this and just let it watch for a little bit, and then we'll get our other sample. Just came out of the freezer, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like when it first comes out. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but there are a whole bunch of little tiny solid chunk crystals of that glacial acetic acid that have formed in the freezer from the vapor. So acetic acid forms a dimer, where two molecules stick together, and you can see that those are already starting to melt because it's warmer in the room. Uh, but for this one, we're gonna go ahead and take that solid frozen acetic acid, glacial acetic acid, and this time we're gonna go ahead and add a solution of baking soda. And we're gonna see what happens. So currently that's starting to melt. So we're going to go ahead and take this and we're going to add some solution of baking soda to it. And potentially that will melt the acetic acid and potentially we'll see some more bubbling, but we'll see. I'll put that right on top. So it's very interesting. We're seeing a little bit of reaction happen and then right away it kind of dies down. It seems to be too cold to react. So this is a reaction that is endothermic and has an increase in entropy. So at lower temperatures, it's not spontaneous. Perhaps we're below that point where that really works. We get a quick flash of reaction at the high concentration, and then as the things mix, it doesn't react anymore. That's fascinating. Over here we have our one that's heating up, and we can actually see a little bit of reaction starting to happen. Um, a little bit of bubbling, but not much. We still just see this mixture of the glacial acetic acid with the uh, sodium carbonate. And then here, we have the two things mixed. Got a little tiny bit of bubbling, nothing else. Well, there's one last uh, comparison. I just want to do a what happens when you mix some baking soda solution with the glacial acetic acid. Uh, we want to put the baking soda solution in first because that's where the water is and therefore 
uh, as we mix the acetic acid, even though the reaction is usually endothermic, the mixing of the acetic acid in the water can be very exothermic. All right, let's see here. 